Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we have an exciting episode. Yep. We're going to be talking about the top 10 things we always use. And the top 10 things we never use. Exactly. So you know what? Let's get started. So we thought it'd be fun to kind of go over all of the things that we always use and all the things that we never use yep. as we've traveled the entire United States over the past three years. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that you think about when you first get started yeah. and you're like, I've got to have this, I've got to have that. You make spreadsheets of all the things Everything. that get mentioned all over the, the websites and YouTube channels. Instagram I and know. all that. You're like, like you I have love this. this. Yes. And you look at it and you say, you know what? I'm going to buy it. It comes in and yeah. you never use it. Exactly. Or you find out you're camping somewhere and you say, I didn't know I would use this all the time. Exactly. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yes. The only problem is because we've structured this with always use and never use, who's going to be the good cop and who's going to be the bad cop? Uh, I'm definitely taking always use. Sorry, Lee. Really? Where did the gray come from? All right, number one on our list are command strips. We use them for everything. We use them to attach hooks. Um, we also use them to put the remotes on the wall because sometimes it gets a little awkward. You don't have a lot of surface area to put them. So we just Velcro them on the wall. Um, we use them obviously for pictures because you can't use nails. So yeah, so they are perfect for pictures all kinds of however you camp you'll figure out how to use them but trust me you'll definitely need them the gray come on so on the top of the list of things we never use the tripod now i know you guys are probably using a tripod right now but for the way we camp and all the states that we've been to and all the travels that we have done we have never not once used the tripod for stabilization. Why? Because in our rig, we've been traveling with a fifth wheel, 43 feet long. It's too long to stabilize quickly. And because it's not quick, we don't ever do it. I would have to have a tripod in the front, stabilization in the back, X chalks on the tires, and even then, the truth be told, delivery. Truth be told, I'm six foot two, and anytime I go to the back of the rig, Pam jumps about an inch in the front. It's just the way things go. So you know what? Everybody camps different, everyone camps unique, but for us, the ease, the quickness, the ability to get it stabilized right when we get to camp, it's just not there. So you know what? This is going in the garbage. Back to things we always use, leveling systems. You definitely have to have some form. We love the water scale, or Lee calls it the box beam level. It's a little complicated for me, so I stick with water scale, but there are so many different kinds. Um, there's a level made pro and other systems like it. Um, there's apps on your phone, whatever it is, you gotta have your rig as level as you can before you use the auto level if you have it. So definitely one item you will use. So let's get back to Lee with things we don't use. Thanks, Pam. Continuing on with our list of things that we never use, right there at the top, next to tripod, are these power stations. The power stations are fantastic in theory. They come with everything. You've got your battery chargers, you have your portable air compressors, you have little LED lights that you can turn on and off, you have AC ports, USB ports, and everything pulled into one nice little package that's durable and lasts long, and you said, you know what, I need this. We have been to 48 states over three years full-time use and have never used it one time. We love it, we love the idea of it, and we actually think that you still need something like this. But just know, we haven't used it at all. Are we gonna continue to carry it? I don't know. Um, probably, just for insurance and emergency purposes, because we're very big on that. Make sure you're always uh, prepared, always be prepared. This is one of those instances. We never use it, but would I not wanna have it? Probably not. Another thing we always use are carpets. 
indoor and outdoor carpets. First of all, yes, you may be camping, but you still want to have that cozy feeling inside your home. So the carpets are great for keeping dirt outside. And also, you know, in an RV, if it's a little bit cooler, the floors get cold. So it definitely helps with that as well. For the outdoor carpets, definitely cozy feeling, homey feeling, and it also keeps the dirt from even coming inside. So definitely recommend you need carpets. All right, the next thing we wanna talk about is actually a little bit controversial. And that's exactly why we're putting it on this video. In fact, some of the things we're gonna be talking about are gonna be controversial, and we wanna be able to have a good conversation with you guys on that. And the next one that we have, and one I know that all of you love, the entire RV industry loves, is RV snap pads. We've never used them. We have two RVs. We've traveled three years full time across America, 48 states, and not once have we used RV snap pads. Now, we are not saying that we'll never use it. We're not saying that we're not gonna go get some and put them on. We're saying that you just don't need it as a day one item. It's absolutely, it makes life easier. 100% we agree with the product, but we just don't have it and we wanna share that with you guys. For the Class C, for Class A's, we absolutely say, trying to go underneath these rigs and put blocks underneath and trying to you know figure all that out it's just it's just a hassle so that's where they solve a huge problem and actually that's one of the things that we're going to be putting on the class c very soon but in all transparency we haven't used them Next on the list of things we always use is the blower. You will need it all the time. If you're out west, we got dirt devils, you have sand all over your pad, you just go out there, you blow it all off. Um, if it's cutting grass, you know, the RV park does a great job at landscaping, but a lot of times they don't uh, get rid of the grass that got on your pad. So you need it for that. You need it for spider webs, leaves. I mean, we use it for so many different things. And uh, yeah, this is definitely one thing that we use all the time, almost daily. That's 100% right. And you know the best part about using the blower is the fact that it's a DeWalt and it comes with all these additional accessories. Something else that we always use is the vacuum. This vacuum is a wet and dry vac so one of the things that it does best is fills the need for you know having to carry those big ones this we use primarily just for the vehicle just for maximus it gets filthy and this thing right here it just fills the need instead of having to go through all the car washes and trying to find the free vacuums and all that this right here absolutely if you're traveling full time grab one of those also we're not promoting dewalt you can get any series out there, Ryobi, any of them. One of the things we found was if we stick to the same brand, all the batteries fit each other. So we're not having multiple different things, multiple different chargers for the batteries and all that kind of stuff. So we just picked one brand, the blower was great, the vacuum was great, so we just stayed with it and you know what, it works. Now we're gonna talk about awning straps. I know you're probably sitting outside right now, nice set of chairs, awnings out, and strapped down secure. We have never done that. I know a lot of people that do it. You can't drive through a park without seeing someone that does it. But you know what? We are so petrified from all the people and places that we've seen where awnings have just been ripped right off, hanging on top of the rig. You name it, we've seen it, and we're just like, no. So if you have any pointers, tips, or tricks, please put it in the comments below. But for us, we have never used any type of awning straps to secure the awning out while we're gone or even through windy weather. If it's windy, awnings are coming in. So another thing we wanna talk about are tank sensors. Freshwater tank sensors, black tank sensors. What you're gonna find out real quick is when you buy a new rig, they're gonna work great for a short while and then they're gonna stop working. They're gonna get clogged up, they're gonna get dirty, there's gonna be something wrong with it. What, uh, on our Class C, we had a broken wire we had to fix and it was always showing empty, kind of like the fresh tank is here, it's just showing empty. That's just because when the wire popped off, none of the rest of it worked. We didn't know that, 
trust me, for a long time. We had to go on there and try to figure that out. The second is the black tank. We just emptied it, but right here, it's showing full. I can't explain it. I don't know why it's like that. On our fifth wheel, it's the exact same thing. We haven't used those tank sensors in years. They haven't worked. So we just ignore it. You know your rig, you know how long you can go with and without it, and you just kind of, you know, do the balance. So things we don't use. Next on the list are lights. Absolutely. You need all types of lights from oh, just a regular flashlight to a headlamp mm. to these blinking lights for the kids, you know, for safety reasons. These are amazing. Yes, when you go walking at night at a campground. Because remember, these are not for the kids to see vehicles. Yeah. These are for the vehicles to see the kids. Exactly. And to have these be able to be rechargeable, our little batteries in there are reusable, not rechargeable, but reusable. Yeah. To have them like that, to blink, to have a light on the end of it, to hang around the neck. Yep. Fantastic. Exactly. And you know what another big point is? There's an LED light out there specifically for you. Yeah. From emergency situations yep. to safety yep. to just going out and trying to find out why something on your rig is broken at night. Because <laughs> half the day is at night. Or backing in if you get somewhere late. You have the headlamp to help guide. I mean, it's so many different reasons. We actually started to come to find yes. out that we love these. Yeah. You just go to Walmart, buy you a couple of them, yep. solar lights, put it around your rig at Especially night. Especially your door. Yeah, yes. shine all over the place. Yep. It keeps the critters away, it yep. keeps the mood, yep. the, it, 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 exactly where you want it to be. <laughs> I mean, you drive up at night, the rig's lit up. Yep. You know what, there's an LED light out there for you guys, yep. definitely recommend it. Yep. All right, next on our list, we're getting a little bit dirty. It's right here, poop hose wrenches. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is one of those things where you will absolutely need when you need it. When it's cold, when the poop hoses are frozen together, when it just gets a mess and you just can't get it disconnected. These right here are invaluable. With that said, we've only used it one time in three years. And the reason for that is we chase 70 degrees. If we are found anywhere near where it snows, Pamela is already telling me we're heading south. So you know what? We definitely recommend having them, but we just never use them. The next thing we want to talk about of things we always use is going to be TPMS. In fact, we won't travel now without having a TPMS. And just to let you know, we did travel for a while when we first started without having one, and that's because we had one that didn't work. And so we just kind of gave up on it. But since then, we got a new one, we put it in, and very shortly, tires started having problems, just as you guys have seen on some of our previous episodes. Tires are always a problem. We have two RVs, we have 18 tires between them and the 350. We have tire issues one in five trips. So you know what? TPMS is definitely something you guys are gonna need. All right, I had to infuse myself into Lee's segment about what we don't use. Apparently the gray and the negative Nancy and all the, <laughs> the bad vibes, we had to bring some positive light into it. Yes. But I'm gonna tell you, she's definitely not gonna like our next topic. And that is zero level chairs. Yes. Uh, sadly, I do agree with him on this one though. You know what? The camping image, the, just the feeling of going camping, sitting out, relaxing, mm -hmm. set up, you've got your rig, you've got your great location, your yeah. favorite spot, you got your drink in hand. Yeah. You just wanna sit down on a zero, le zero level chair, kick up the feet yes. and relax. The reality, and we're gonna tell you from personal experience, yes. we carried one around for about a year uh -huh. before we got so mad and threw it away. Yeah. It's just one of those things where we just never found a way to use it. Well, the thing is that, yes, and thought they're great. However, they're very awkward to carry. Yes. They're very heavy. Bulky. You sit on it and you basically just need to sleep in it or yeah. lay down on it. And it's hard to sit in it because the back is so high. So we're very social people. So every time we're at, know that. <laughs> <laughs> every time we're at a campground and somebody walks by and wants to talk, you don't want to be laying down talking. So you get pop back up and you go down and you have 
dogs and you have kids and, and bugs yes and you're always in motion guys i want to be honest with you <laughs> zero level chairs are great for the pool they're great for the home yeah but when you're traveling around america yeah. trying to carry one around pop it up all the time uh -huh. it's just cumbersome and yeah. it really when you finally get to your location, when you finally get set up, you really just don't have the energy anymore to kind of do all that. Yeah. So take that in mind. I know there's probably a bunch of you right now that are on zero level chairs yeah. watching this video yes. going, what about me? Yeah. We agree. Everyone camps different. Yeah. But for us, we don't need it. We've never used it. Yeah. All right. The next item we definitely use every day is our Blackstone griddle. We absolutely love that thing. And if you think about it, if you're going camping, why do you want to be inside the kitchen when you can be outside? And it also is always a problem with the space you have with your stove. If you're already an RVer, you know that already. If you're planning on being an RVer, I'm sure you've toured a bunch of them already and you thought, you know what, this is really cute. However, yeah, we need a little bit more. So definitely think about the, the griddle type grill. Um, it's also nice to have a charcoal, but you can't make eggs on a charcoal and uh, bacon is a little bit harder too. So the griddle is definitely the way to go. All right, this one I have to take over from Lee of things that we don't do or don't use and that's baking s'mores. I know I'm a mom, I hate to say this, but yeah, we did it maybe the first month or two, but now that we've been into our being for three years, barely ever. Our oh, kids don't even want it anymore. First it started, well, mom, I don't really want to have the cracker and the chocolate anymore. I just want to do the marshmallow. I just want to roast it. Now we're to the point where they just grab the uncooked marshmallows out of the bag and eat them like that. So yes, that is definitely something we don't do. <laughs> All right. Another controversial topic and something I know that mm -hmm. everyone in the RV industry absolutely loves and absolutely uses all the time, yep. but something that we never use, yep. solar and generators. Exactly. I know, I can hear everyone <laughs> sc screaming at us right now. They're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. We use our solar all the time. We use our generator daily. Yeah. We agree that if you camp that way, yeah. you will absolutely use it. Guys, if you don't get solar packages installed and generators installed from the beginning, yeah. it's such a huge investment and yeah. is exactly why we don't have it on our fifth wheel. Yeah. It's because after we bought it, we didn't have the generator, mm -hmm. we didn't have the solar. Yeah. The, the cost of doing it was just too much. Yeah. So we've been to 48 states over three years and yeah. have never used it once. That being said, when we bought the Class C, it came with solar and generator, yeah. and it has completely changed the way we camp. Yeah. We traveled 48 states with a fifth wheel. Mm -hmm. We became uh, accustomed to doing it one way. Yeah. We finally start traveling with a Class C, and it completely changes the way we camp, and now we've actually used the generator, yeah. and we've used the solar. That's true. We've used it, and uh, it's just amazing just to have it as a backup. It's mm -hmm. nice to know that if you you know get stopped somewhere out of whatever reason you have a generator, you can turn on the AC yep. so it's just a nice thing to have but you, we have never used it on our fifth wheel on a fifth wheel we never used it and it's because we didn't get it from the beginning yeah with the class C we've used it at a couple truck stops already there's nothing better than pulling in starting up the generator yeah. running the ACs so again the way you camp will determine whether you're going to use the solar in the generators or not yeah next is thermal cubs there are so many different kinds. It doesn't matter what you use. We like to use Yeti. The only thing I would say is that you get something with a lid that closes. So the reason why we specifically like Yeti is because you can actually take the lid uh, cap off. It's a magnetic, magnetic system. So you can take them off, put them back on, close them, wash them really good. You can take the rubber seal off and wash it really good, especially if you don't have a dishwasher. And uh, they're just so versatile. You know how it is. You're camping. It's beautiful at night, but there's bugs, always bugs. So you want to be able to close the lid so you don't have any kind of surprise at the end. I mean, I guess a little protein is not so bad, but we prefer to have clean water. <laughs> so yeah, this is definitely one we use all the time. Yes, the gray is here for a reason. We have another controversial topic. Camping memberships. Mm -hmm. We don't use them. 
And we, we need to talk about this for a minute. Yes. One of the first camping memberships that we ever got was uh -huh. Thousand Trails. Mm -hmm. And it came with the rig when we purchased it. In yeah, fact, for one year. It came mm -hmm. with this rig when we purchased this one too. Yeah. So for we've had uh, Thousand Trails twice already yes. for two different years, and we've never used it. Yeah. Now I know there's probably half our viewers that have Thousand Trails memberships, yeah. and you guys love it. Yes. But we found it so hard to use. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we don't use them enough, or we're not using them right, yeah. or we just don't know how to use them. Yeah. But we don't. From trying to make the reservation to finding the right times or yeah. finding the right campground in the network yeah. that was in our route. And in the region, yes. And, and the that's region. the point. I mean, and there are so many details you have to, I mean, so many types of memberships. And of course, they give you the lowest one mm -hmm. with, a, with the RV when you purchase it. So it, it never worked out that we could use it. You know what? <laughs> There are so many more RV memberships that are out there. Yeah. I don't know what you guys use or don't uh -huh. use. Definitely put it in the comments below. Yeah. We're just sharing some of the truth with you guys. We want to be transparent. Yeah. But RV memberships, we just don't use them. No. All right, we're here at the end. And the one thing that we use every single day, yeah. it's your phones. Yes. Guys, your phone is the center of everything. Mm -hmm. For most rigs coming out 2024 and beyond, they're all going to be centered around the apps that you use on your phone, yeah. from running your slides to running your awnings to running your water equipment, heaters. Your we know water a lot heaters, about water heaters. Everything <laughs> from your reservations that you use, mm -hmm. the planning that you use, weather apps, weather apps, to stay safe. wind apps. Yeah, everything comes right to your phone. Hot spots. If you Hot don't spots. have, you know, if you need to watch a little Netflix or something, you never know. You got to. <laughs> These right here are the center of your entire world as yeah. you go full time across America. I tell you what, second to none, your phone's center of everything. Yes. You know what? We had a great time. We all, hope you did too. All the things that we always use and that we never use. We yep. hope it gives you guys some good insight. Yep. And you know what? We'll see you next time. Maybe that's why they were sensitive. I don't even know what I'm saying. Blackstone. Okay. All right. One of the items we definitely use all the time. All right. No. <laughs> Can you start? Oh, you did. It's on? Nope. Yes, you could cook it on here, but do you really want it inside your home when your space is so small? It's just going to stink up the whole place. All the fire alarms go off. It's just not fun. I'm just letting you know. Headlights flashlights these uh i don't even know what you call these amazing blinking lights 